Welcome back everybody. Today we're going over the top five guns that I reviewed in 2018. Now I don't have some sort of like elaborate chart to go over all the different factors that go into what I picked. Um, but basically coolness, newness, um, surprises, things like that um, go into it. Price of course always goes into it as well. Um, but the criteria is that the video review of this gun would have had to be published within 2018. So I have some stuff in now that I'm currently reviewing, but it's not done. One in particular that definitely would be on this list. You'll have to wait until that video comes out though. Um, but had to be published in 2018. So uh, again, in no particular order, we're gonna walk through them here. First one up, simply because it's the first one I grabbed and saw, is going to be this little girl right here. It looks a little bit different probably than how you guys last saw it, but this, uh, pistol here started its life out as one of a uh, Palmetto State Armory's nitride uh, air pistol kits. So it's got a 10.5 inch nitride 5.56 barrel. We've added some stuff there. We added the uh, the Mission First Tactical Flash Hider handguard and grip and trigger guard. I'm actually probably going to put an SBA3 stock on there as well, or brace, rather, excuse me, not a stock, uh, stock extension rather, and SBA3 on there. But uh, even in its most basic form, which is how I reviewed it, you guys can check that video out. It had very good accuracy. It had a grand total of zero malfunctions at all. And the beauty of these, these kits is that even right now, as I'm filming this video, the kits are going for like $269 shipped. It's got an MP HP tested 158 bolt. Some of the kits have uh, nitrided um, bolt carrier groups, but this one has the chrome wind uh, 8620 carrier. And uh, I mean, they just, for the money, it's, why would you not have one at this point? In my opinion, they run well, they have good specs. And uh, even the CAC blade here that we saw here, I mean, it's, it's perfectly functional. It gives you a good purchase should you decide to fire it from your shoulder. Of course, you don't have to if you don't want to, but I mean, you got 70-75 T6 upper or lower, 4150 nitrided barrel. Um, you guys saw the accuracy, it shoots sub 2, two MOA all day, uh, even with the mil-spec trigger. So the thing is just, it's an excellent little pistol, especially for the money, but uh, the money there is kind of the key part there. You're talking $269, then you add a lower, which they've had lately for $39, and some sort of optic or rear sight, just the endless rear is what we have here. And uh, you're looking at under, you know, 330 bucks out the door for a pretty decent quality little AR pistol. Um, I would imagine, you know, as as times go on and, and the political environment changes, we're gonna look back on that one and be like, man, that was an all time deal. Um, I agree with that. That's why we're throwing it in uh, today's video. So that's number one. Again, these are not in any particular order. Next up, we'll talk about this little guy here. This is the uh, Smith & Wesson m and Shield 380. Easy. So it has a magazine that holds eight rounds and then one in the chamber, of course, should you choose to do so. So you get nine rounds of 380 ACP and it's in a relatively large frame. So why the heck would I care about this gun? Uh, that was kind of my initial thoughts on it as well. Then I got it in and uh, started shooting it and let a bunch of other people shoot it as well. Um, basically, it's designed to be the easiest kind of gun to operate as possible for people who have strength or confidence issues, which both of those are probably equally likely in a certain demographic. Uh, no doubt in my mind, this is targeted towards women, uh, elderly people or people with injuries or anything like that. And for them, I think it's such a good choice. You can limp wrist the crap out of this gun and it runs. This gun's never had a malfunction of any kind with any ammo to date. Um, you have your nitrated or melanited, I think Smith & Wesson has a special name for it, barrel uh, and slide. So you have good corrosion resistance. The grip has a good texture to it. It does have a grip safety, um, but that's because it's not a striker fired gun. So while it looks like a striker fired gun, it's actually a hammer fired gun has good sights, has these little wings here on the back of the slide, which allow you to get a good purchase and run the slide easier. I mean, I, I think I showed it in my video, but look, I mean, you can do that with one hand. You can take it all the way back. It's easy to clean, easy to disassemble, and the recoil impulse is almost nothing. So if you have somebody who is either a new shooter or is already, you know, recoil sensitive or has a hard time running the slide on whatever gun for whatever reason, uh, there's a variety of reasons that can happen. This is definitely one I'd take a look at. Um, 380, 
you know, there's definitely decent loads out there that uh, you can rely on uh, if you have good shot placement in a 380 caliber. Now, of course, would you want something like a nine millimeter? Yeah, but then it wouldn't be as easy to manipulate. The recoil wouldn't be as non-existent as it is on this gun. I think all in all, it's just a great package for a certain uh, demographic of people. And like I said in my video, I, I mean, I like it. I can shoot this gun so fast because the sights just track so well because there's no movement under recoil. Um, so, I mean, there's not a lot of guns that I can probably dump nine rounds into a you know, a small target as quickly as I can with this gun. It just shoots extremely, extremely well. It has a good grip angle and it's not expensive. That's another thing. So it's very reasonably priced. So again, a lot of new shooters, I would take a good look at it. Um, a lot of people like to invest their egos into things for whatever reason. If you can put that aside, I'd take a look at this gun uh, for a lot of folks. I had to change the camera angle to get this one in. This is the uh, Thompson Center. LRR, or Long Range Rifle. This particular one is chambered in 6.5 Creedmoor. Uh, it takes AI pattern mags. It has this nice chassis system here, all adjustable uh, stock, whether you want to adjust the comb height, the length of pull, all of that stuff. It's got an excellent trigger in there. The action, super smooth, takes AI mags. And, I mean, look at that. I mean, it's just awesome. It has an oversized bolt, comes with a base. I believe it's a 20 MOA base. We have this fluted barrel. It's got a nice taper to it, so that way you don't have a ton of weight out there on the end. It comes with a muzzle brake. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of it, but I tell you what, if you want a gun that has no recoil and you, you have the ability to spot your own uh, shots, keep that brake on there, and this gun will do that for you all day long. Um, another thing about this gun is that, again, it's not super expensive. Like I said in the video, it, it's not cheap, don't get me wrong. I think it's in the, you know, 1,200-ish dollars uh, range, depending on the sites where you pick it up and sales and all that stuff. However, I said in that video that this gun will perform as well as a lot of the $5,000 custom rifles. I stand by that, it absolutely will. You guys, uh, anybody who saw the accuracy test that we did with it, it's phenomenally accurate. Um, just really really good high quality barrel overall it's got 5r rifling in there as well which i know a lot of folks really like super easy to clean also deforms the bullet less as it goes through gives you a little bit of increase in velocity as well Minim minimally so but there is some um, but all in all i mean just an awesome gun in every way um, these were announced i think i shot them this year i think i got mine in maybe may june and i shot the crap out of it um, and never an issue no hang-ups or nothing uh, super reliable, super accurate the entire time. It's got a great trigger if I didn't touch on that already. Uh, comes with the Hogue grip. You can use a lot of AR grips if you want to. Just make sure they don't have a back tang on there and they should swap out. But I just left the Hogue in there because it works just fine. But all in all, just a great rifle. Uh, these come in a 308 and I think 260 if I'm... If I'm, if I'm wrong, I'll annotate it below, but I know they come in 308 as well for those of you guys that don't want to spend the uh, 6.5 money, which I get in terms of ammunition. Next up, we have one of Brownell's retro rifles. Now, in 2017, I was involved for the marketing campaign that led up to these, or at least my alter ego, known as DM Slider, was involved in that ad campaign. So I had advanced notice on these things, and uh, anybody who watches the channel a lot knows a few things about me. Number one, I love 20-inch AR-15s. I love lightweight barrels. And uh, this has both of those, plus it has some very, very cool historical lineage to it as well. And uh, it's not overwhelmingly expensive for what it is. I mean, take a look at the uh, Colt retro rifles if you wanna uh, see a price comparison point. But we have the cool duckbill flash hider out here, very close to exactly what was issued out there on the rifles. We have our non F mark front sight base, our A1 um, front sight, which is different than current ones for those that don't know. And in my opinion, that is the best uh, AR-15 front sight out there. We have the triangular green hand yards, which again, appropriate to the rifles that were issued. The non uh, current AR-15 slip ring there. It's got the straight one there. I have an A1 style lower, which is different. I don't want to go into all the details and bore the crap out of you guys, but uh, it is. Check the video out if you guys are interested. Actually, now I believe these are actually shipping with correct A1 um, dust covers on them as well. Now, when I got mine in, that wasn't the case. It has a current production dust cover, but the, the new ones are the current production ones. I think come up with the actual A1 as well. It has the chrome bolt carrier group there with no forward assist, again, as intended or as it was originally issued. Again, no forward assist out here, no shell deflector either. So if you're a lefty, you're probably gonna get smashed in the face with it in terms of brass. So keep that in mind. We have the very unique uh, 601 
charging handle in there. A1 upper with the A1 sights, which are very good as well. We do have the, uh, the rather the bolt release, which is again, A1 correct. Um, the A1 style grip, which I don't know why the heck they ever went to an A2. That thing's just way better. Uh, A1 length stock as well. Just a lot of really cool stuff going on. It's a 1 in 12 chrome lined 4150 barrel uh, button rifle, just like the originals. A lot of people were questioning whether it could stabilize ammunition. Uh, definitely go check out my accuracy test of this rifle. And you guys will see, I think the only time we had key holding was, I think, 73 grain ammo. So we ran some heavier stuff through it, and it ran them just fine. Um, of course, it's designed around the uh, M183 or 55 grain ammo, and it shoots that great as well. But you can shoot heavier stuff if you want to, and it's just a great lightweight little package. I think they, I'm almost positive, Brownells is offering the uh, waffle mags for it now as well if you guys want that one. But it's been 100% it's been reliable, super lightweight, super handy. You get the added velocity that you get out of a 20 inch rifle, which is great um, in terms of terminal ballistics. It's also great towards in terms of uh, bucking the wind downrange, and it's also great. Uh, in terms of reducing the recoil with that rifle length gas system. Just a super smooth gun to shoot, super fun. And uh, I'd imagine most folks are gonna buy it for the collectability of it. But if you wanna use it as a work gun too, the thing's up to the task. It's got great specs and should run a long time. I've fired this a ton since the review. You guys can see during the review, that bolt carrier group was clean. It ain't clean anymore. because I, <laughs> I shoot it all the time for fun and uh, it delivers uh, exactly what you want there, which is fun. It's super fun to shoot. It's a great rifle. All right, next gun up. We'll just continue moving on. This was kind of a hard one. You know, we'll, we'll hear more about that here in just a second, but this is the uh, FN 509. Uh, so probably a lot of you guys have seen the video I did on this, and you've probably also seen that I've been carrying it in a lot of other videos um, on my hip because I've continued to shoot this gun. I shoot this gun pretty much every week, at least a couple of mags through it and have uh, since the review. Uh, one reason is because I simply like shooting it. It's a very pleasurable gun to shoot. It's got a good trigger for a duty style gun. Great grip, great ergonomics. Uh, I liked the old FNS pistols and this one really improved in just about every way that you could on those. Um, it has the full size grip there with a 17 plus one capacity and it's got the shorter slide. So it's uh, it's kind of like a mullet and it's all, it's all, <laughs> It's all business up front, party in the back. But we have, of course, the FN Cold Hammer Forge barrel in there. Um, nice shredded slide. I added a Mariglow eye dots on there. And uh, for those who don't know, this pistol takes Sig Sauer sights. Um, so there's, I mean, virtually unlimited number of uh, sight options for it. So these are actually Sig sights, Sig Mariglow sights that I put on there. And uh, I've been testing this because I, I I'm very likely going to make this uh, probably one of my home defense pistols uh, here shortly. Um, I'll probably have to clean it because it's dirty as crap, but it still never had a single malfunction of any kind. Very pleasurable to shoot, and uh, I just shoot it very, very well. FN, in my opinion, makes pretty good stuff all the way around, um, and uh, this is definitely no departure from that. Uh, definitely check the review out if you guys are looking for a good gun that you can depend on that isn't a Glock, because I know a lot of people uh, just don't like Glocks for whatever reason. Uh, this is one I would definitely take a look at. No external safeties, which I like and prioritize as well on pistols. So, well, pistols that I'm going to use for duty use anyway. So that's the top five list as it sits there. I love all those guns. They all bring something unique to the table or whether it be price point, performance, whatever the case may be. Now, just like in the uh, top five pieces of gear video that we did, we're gonna have a, a, a bonus or almost made the list. And it's this little guy right here, which probably isn't surprising given what I just said about the FN. This is the Glock 19X. I mocked this gun relentlessly on social media uh, when it was first announced, um, simply because my initial thought was, why wouldn't you want the opposite? Why do you want a full-size grip here in a 19 size or four inch slide? You get less sight radius, you have uh, less energy as the bullet leaves the barrel, of course, because it's shorter in that regard. And then you have the problem in terms of concealability where you have a full-size grip. Now, of course, this was uh, this pistol, rather, is based on the pistol that Glock submitted for the Army's MHS trials. So um, there is that. There's historical lineage to it as well. 
But when I got it, one thing I found out, just like the FN509 and just like the Glock 45, is that whatever this weirdo combination is, yeah, it just shoots so well. I, I think, this is my hypothesis and I believe I'm right, is that it's a combination of having to be able to get all of your, your hand. I have relatively large hands, for those that don't know, I wear XL size gloves, or sometimes 2XL actually, um, to be able to get a full purchase on the grip and to, be ha and to have less reciprocating mass coming back and then add in the fact that it has the Gen 5 trigger on there, which is, in my opinion, the best factory trigger that Glock's put out to date. Um, it's just an awesome shooting pistol. Um, I had to give the edge to the 509. I think I like the 509 a little bit more, but I like this gun a lot as well. Uh, this one here, we put some night vision sights on, um, and it comes with two 19-round mags, for those that don't know, and a 17-round flush-fitting mag. Uh, this one also has the... Uh, water maritime cups so that we can fire it underwater uh for those of you guys playing call of duty online you can do that uh, <laughs> but all in all it's a cool gun it's a good pistol and it almost made the list if it wasn't for the 509 it probably would have i think i just like the f on a 509 just a little bit more and it's a similar type of gun um, but that one's been on sale a lot. If you guys aren't following me over on Facebook, definitely do so um, because that one's been on sale pretty much every other week or so, seems like, uh, and for a great price. It comes with night sights as well. Um, I'm one who's known to trash Glocks for their factory sights and uh, stand by that. Uh, however, their, their factory night sights aren't terrible. They're usable, unlike their plastic ones. Um, but that's that. That's the top five list. Um, if there's any that surprised you, any that didn't make it that surprised you, definitely let us know down below in the comment section. I look forward to uh, hearing your responses. These, these videos, I've been doing them now. This is my third year doing them. And you guys uh, definitely, definitely have some opinions down in the comment section that I look forward to. So go ahead and post down there. If you guys aren't following me over on Facebook to see the deals that I've talked about uh, throughout this video, Check me out over there. You don't have to have a Facebook account to see that page. You can bookmark it and just visit every now and then if you want to, to see the deals as they come out in real time. YouTube just doesn't allow that capability. Uh, you can also sign up for my email list if you guys don't want to miss videos or deals. I do a top three usually uh, deals of the week and then the videos that came out during the there the week as well, which is usually three or four. I put up, I think, 154 videos this year on the main channel. We saw a good bit of growth uh, in terms of subscribers and viewers. Um, I'm going to hit 300,000, it looks like, in January in terms of subscribers here on YouTube, and that's awesome. I think we're going to hit 100 and 180,000 followers on Facebook and 160,000 likes here uh, in the next couple of days on Facebook as well, so that's growing. Um, Unfortunately, the downside of that is I don't respond to all the comments here on YouTube anymore because I just can't. I get about 5,000 a day, uh, but I do respond to every uh, message I get over on Facebook. Uh, over right now, I'm only getting about 2,000 a day, so I can still respond to those. Um, and I try to, guys, because I realize that um, no matter what I do here, I'm just a guy in a field or sitting out by on a dock talking about guns. Um, and without you guys, nobody hears it and it wouldn't be possible. So each and every one of you that's followed, subscribed, watched over the years, I appreciate it. And uh, the channel is, like I said, it's continuing to grow and it's just, uh, it's been a great, great thing for me. It's something I never planned. I never planned to have a YouTube channel in any way at all. <laughs> uh, it's funny how life throws a curveball sometimes, um, but I appreciate all of you because you guys are the ones that make it happen. And uh, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, my family and I uh, very much so appreciate it. So that's it, guys. I hope all of you guys had a Merry Christmas and you guys have a Happy New Year as well. Look forward to seeing you. Lots of new content. I have so much stuff uh, in the queue right now for review uh, that you guys are going to be seeing in 2019. So that's it, guys. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. And I hope to see all of you in the next video.